Fighters of the 82nd Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces destroyed a large number of Russian armored combat vehicles on the 14-kilometer road, which Russian soldiers called the Road of Death, in the Kursk region of Russia. As can be seen from the drone footage, tanks, armored personnel carriers, armored infantry fighting vehicles and armored vehicles worth millions of dollars were destroyed on the road. Most of the destroyed equipment belongs to the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces and Kadyrovites. Russia has been heavily relying on refurbishing older tanks, such as the T-72, T-62, and T-55-54 models, from its Soviet-era stockpiles. Most of its current tank fleet on the battlefield is relying on tanks no longer in production. While this has allowed Russia to preserve more advanced tanks like the T-90M, Russia's Soviet reserves are depleting quickly, and the tank fleet is on a sharp decline. Since the beginning of the full-scale war, the Russian armed forces have removed almost all of their T-80 tanks from storage, 90%. The Omsk 22nd storage base for T-80 tanks of the Russian armed forces has been completely emptied. Satellite images of the base also confirm this. Also, since February 24, 2024, the Russian armed forces have lost almost a thousand units of this type of tank. Very soon, these tanks will cease to exist in service with the Russian Federation, and this is a very, very good tank. Basically, the tanks remaining in storage in the Russian Federation are T-62, T-64 and T-72 of the most shaggy years. Ascent analyst at HIMARST, who tracks open-air storages and shares insights on X, provides a more detailed assessment. He reported that by July 6, 2024, Russia's stock of T-55s had dropped by 31%, T-62s by 37%, and T-80BS by 79%, with only 9% of T-72s removed from storage. While these figures may not be exact, they provide a good idea about the rapid depletion of Russia's tank reserves. Given that since the beginning of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia has lost over 3,000 tanks. Information that can be independently confirmed by open source projects such as Oryx or Warspotting. Russia has lost more tanks than it had in its entire pre-war active duty tank force, as well as and over 30% of its most advanced self-propelled artillery and multiple rocket launcher systems. A report from senior analyst Dara Masakot, published by the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, further details that Russia is expected to exhaust its stockpile of multiple Soviet-era military equipment by 2026. As the initial invasion has evolved into an attritional war, understanding the enemy's will to fight, their resources, and their ability to replace losses becomes critical in order to calculate the trajectory of war. Any attritional war ultimately becomes a test of societal endurance, war economics, diplomacy, and the ability to replace losses. As the war drags on, these problems intensify, pushing one side closer to a tipping point where continuing the war worsens their position. 
Military production and the capacity to replace losses are among the war's tangible factors that can be calculated and projected well. An American M1 Abrams tank appears to be fighting in Russia's Kursk region, Business Insider reports, citing a recently published video from the 47th Mechanized Brigade. The publication emphasized that the Abrams was created during the Cold War to fight the Soviets, and now, after several decades of service, it appears to have reached Russian soil. The video shows an Abrams tank engaged in combat with an M2 Bradley IFV. The 47th Brigade called the US-provided armored duo a terrible weapon for the invaders. It is indicated that several open intelligence sources and Ukrainian media outlets have determined that this battle was captured in the village of Novoivanovka in the Kursk region of Russia. While other Western armored fighting vehicles have already been deployed to Kursk, the video released by the 47th Brigade appears to be the first known instance of Abrams tanks being used there, the publication said. George Barros, head of the Geospatial Intelligence Group and Russia analyst at the Institute for the Study of War, also said that, this is definitely the first time an Abrams tank has been spotted in the Kursk region. Business Insider recalls that the Abrams is a third-generation main battle tank that was designed and built with the Soviets in mind. Robert Greenway, a former U.S. Army Abrams operator and defense expert at the Heritage Foundation, previously told BI that the tank was made for Central European planes against Soviets, adding that it was built to kill tanks. The Abrams has been in service since the 1980s and has logged extensive combat experience in the decades since. The U.S. sent 31 M1A1 variants to Ukraine last fall, and earlier this month, Australia said it would send nearly 50 of its own in a move that would more than double Kiev's existing inventory. Abrams tanks are highly advanced and heavily armored, but Ukraine received older export models without some of the latest upgrades, like the newest armor. It has taken extra precautions and outfitted them with added layers of protection to help defend against inbound munitions like rockets, missiles, and exploding drones. Both the Abrams and the Bradley can be seen outfitted with some additional armor in the recent footage said to be from Kursk. However, despite the added protection, the Abrams is still vulnerable to the same threats that have challenged other armored vehicles on the battlefield. Some open-source estimates suggest Ukraine has lost up to 16 tanks, but this has not been confirmed.